This session is about developing a responsive single page application using this AngularJS. How to write a basic program in AngularJS? Whenever you want to start this AngularJS program, first you have to download and include your AngularJS plugin. So that's what we are doing. First we have included our AngularJS plugin in the script. Next we have a directive called ng-app. What does it do? Whenever you include this AngularJS plugin and if you run it in the browser, this plugin will look for the directive called ng-app. Once it finds that directive, it will that particular element will be the root of your AngularJS application. Now, if you see in this example, we have ng app in the body. So, whatever you are declaring inside this body, everything will be considered as a AngularJS components. So, here you can take right ng controller or ng click event, everything. So, this part under the body will be considered as a AngularJS components. Okay. So, to build the AngularJS application, what do we need? just one notepad plus notepad or any your favorite tool then just one web browser that's more than enough to run your web application before we go to demo do you have any other questions please post your questions in the question window Okay, um, we are getting a question from Surender. Can we add ng app? Yes, so this wherever you add the ng app, from there only AngularJS application starts. So if you want to start the application, you have to add ng app. Okay, the next question what is ng controller? So if you want to write any other business logics or the validations, all the logics goes inside the controller. This is where you can write the logics. Okay. Let's start the basic AngularJS application. So we'll, we can answer all the questions. So what I'm going to do, already I have downloaded my AngularJS file, so I have to create my HTML right here. Let me open that particular HTML, whatever I have created now. Okay. okay, can you guys see my screen? Is this visible for you? Yeah, thank you. So this is the editor, it's a sublime editor. So it is really makes developers life easy. Whenever I want to create a HTML5 skeleton, I will type like HTML colon 5 and tap. It will create the skeleton for us. This is the best editor I feel. Let's create the title. Okay. Whenever we want to start our application, we have to include this AngularJS script file inside this application. So now we have included the script. Okay. So as I told, whenever we include the script, the script will look for ng app directive. So, this wherever you are writing this ng app directive, that will be considered as the root of your application. 
If I write my NG app right here inside my body, this will be considered as the root. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to include this NG app in the root of your DOM. Our root of your DOM is this HTML tag. Right here, I'm including this NG app. So I have included the NG app. Here I want to give some name for this AngularJS application. Let's give it as a demo. So here I defined my AngularJS application. Now you have to declare it. Okay, I'm creating a script tag right here itself where app equal to This is the syntax for declaring your AngularJS application. If you see in this syntax, we are giving some empty brace right here. So this empty brace is for the dependency injection what we discussed. So what if you need any other modules to access in this particular application, what you can do, you can download those modules and inject it as a dependencies. For example, if you want to include this bootstrap, download this bootstrap script and include it as a dependency right here bootstrap so you can access all the functions inside the bootstrap use inside this particular angular js application this is the use of dependency injection for now we don't need this dependencies let's start the basic application okay now we have created an angular js application i'm marking it as a angular js application with the name called demo let's run this Okay, that's my developer tool. Now we started this application. Now I want to write some kind of functionalities over here. As I mentioned, if you want to write your business logics or any other validations, we have to write it in our controller. So let's create the controller for Angular JS. I have defined a controller called test controller over here. So now I have to define it in the same way how we have defined this AngularJS. So app dot controller of test controller. So you can extend, we are mentioning for this particular application and creating the controller. That's what we are mentioning right here. So now we have created the controller. Let me add the console.log right here. So we'll get to know whether it is coming inside this controller or not. You can see this. Now it is coming inside this test controller. So whenever you are defining the controller and the test controller it will call this particular controller it will come it will execute whatever the functionalities you have returned inside this controller okay now let's see the expressions inside this particular controller if you want to do any angular js expressions we have to use this double brace let let me build this 4 plus 4. So this is normal HTML. If I want to evaluate as an expression, you have to give it inside this particular braces. Now if I give 4 plus 4 over here, it will evaluate it and it will give the result. So let me put it in the big size. Uh, here so this is a normal html content and i'm adding right here 4 plus 4 and it is evaluating and it is giving the result so you can write all the expressions inside this double braces in the angular js so it will evaluate internally it is using our normal dot eval function okay now we are seeing this expression right here now i want to see what is called two-way binding in this angular js Let's do that. 
I am going to create a scope variable inside this controller. I am creating a scope variable called name. I am just naming it as Jeff. So this is my scope variable name. If I want to give the scope variable name inside this controller, I will give it in the same way whatever I have done it in the expression. Let me do this. So I am going to give this particular variable name right here. So this is available right here, it came. So whatever the name I mentioned right here, it is available, you can access that in the view. What I have done, I am not writing any functionality. So if you are using jQuery, what you will be writing, we will be getting the class or ID of this particular content and inner HTML or that HTML will push it. But here we need not to do anything. Whenever you update it in the model, automatically that model will update in the view. Let's do it in this way. We have one more directive called ng model in the AngularJS. So what it will do, whatever you are mentioning right here, in the same object you can give it to the model. So this model will take this, if you change anything in the model, it will update this object over there in the controller as well as the object there in this view. So I have, we are using this dollar scope variable called name. Let's give this name as a model to this text box. You can see this, let me put it in the bigger text. Okay, now inside that, whatever changes I am making, it will be updated in the view. I haven't written any functionalities over here. If you want to accomplish this function with normal JavaScript or jQuery, what you will be doing? We will be listening for this key up event in the text box. Whenever the key up event happens, we will be updating this view. But this is what we are calling as a two-way binding. So whenever you change this particular model value, this view is automatically changing. This is called two-way binding over here. Okay. Can we use multiple controllers inside our application? Yes, we can use multiple controllers right here. Already I have defined one controller called test controller in this application. Let me define one more controller. I'm defining one more controller called test controller new. In the same way, you have to extend this controller. Okay, now I have extended this controller. If I can I use this particular controller scope variable inside this controller? No, you can't use it. So because this controller is separate from this controller, if you want to use it, you have to use it by our root scope variable. Let's try this before. Already I defined a scope variable called name inside my first controller. If I keep name right here, inside my second controller, let me run this. See, here we are not at all getting anything. Because this scope available only inside this controller itself. If you want to share the scope between the controller, you can do with the dollar scope, root scope or you can do with the services. So let's, instead of writing it in the dollar scope, let's make it in the root scope. I'm injecting the root scope to this particular controller. Let me put this Jeff in the root scope. 
Now this GIF is available in the first controller as well as in the second controller. So whatever the data you are defining in the root scope, it will be available all over this application. But if you are defining it as a normal dollar scope, it will be available only inside that particular controller. Okay, do you guys having any other questions? Okay, we have a question from Surender called Roots. He is asking me to explain this root scope again. Okay, so what does it mean by root scope? Normally, this root scope, let me build one more, let me put this scope variable right here scope dot name equal to Jeff. So, this particular Jeff will be available accessible only inside this controller alone. So, I want to declare a name inside my one controller, but I want to access it all over the application. What you can do? So, if you are defining it on the root scope, it is like an instance of your application. So, however, we, we have this global variable in the same way. Whatever you are defining as a root scope that some particular name, so that will be available in the global all your application. So, you can access it anywhere in the controller. Okay. What is global and local variable? So, global and local variable is so if you want, it's like a normal our functionalities. Whenever you define it as a local variable, it will be accessible only inside that particular function alone. So after after that particular function, if you want to access it, that local variable inside the out of that function, you can't access it. It will throw this undefined. So you have to define it as globally. If you are defining it as a globally. So, it will be accessible all over this application. Next one, can we have a mo more ng app? I am getting a question from Nitish. Can I use more ng app? No. You can use only one ng app as per the application. Because otherwise, you will get confused. Okay, where does application start? As I mentioned, application starts from wherever it finds the ng app. So, this will be considered as the root. You can't have two root for a single application. So, we can use only one ng app per application. How to create a user defined function? I am getting a question from Elia. Let me do this. Okay. Now, we have seen normal two way binding and other things. Now, I want to create a function. Whenever user clicks on some particular button, I want to do some kind of business logic. Let me write this. Inside my file, let me delete these controllers. So, otherwise it is confusing. Now, I have only one controller in my application. Let me create a button. Whenever I click on this particular button, I want to alert the user saying, okay, you click this button. So, I have to write a controller functionality right here. Alert me. I am creating one function called alert me. So, I am going to define this function inside my first controller. So, this is the syntax to create the function, user defined function in the control. Now, we have a button. Whenever I click on this button, it will throw the alert. This is the functionality we have written right here. This is how we can create user defined functions inside this AngularJS application. Yeah, I am getting one more question from Nitish. Can I have no app, no controller in the AngularJS application? Yes, of course, you can create an application with no app. I mean, 
you have to mark it as a ng app so but you need not to define it let me do that for you right here what i am going to do i am just going to define just ng app i am not going to write this particular ng app equal to whatever it is let me comment everything so I define only ng app over there and I am deleting the functionalities right here. So still we can access all our expressions, everything inside this functional. Can you see this number 8? Now with just only the ng app, whenever you are mentioning it as ng app, it will be considered as the AngularJS application. You need not to define it. But the best practice is give it as a name, then only you can create the controllers and other stuff with the application. Just with the ex expression alone, we can't build the application. That's why we are defining it. Yeah. And we are getting a question from Shahil Ka asking how, how we can create this URL routing. Okay, now we have seen the basic AngularJS session. Now let me show you the application whatever I built using this AngularJS. Okay, this is the basic program we have covered. Let's go for this demo. Now our scenario is I want to build a basic AngularJS application where user can log in, create a new user, view this user list and delete user. This is what the functionality I want to create using AngularJS. What are the things you need before to create this application? One is our editor. Next one is the browser to view this application. Now I am going to build this application on Node.js server. So you have, you should have the Node.js installed in your machine. Then I am going to use MongoDB to store the user information. I am going to use, this is the application. Okay. Let me check whether I have node installed in my machine or not. So if you want to check whether you have a node installed, just type node hyphen B. It will give the version number whatever you install. If you don't have a node, that doesn't matter. It is really simple to install this node. Just go to node.org, download the executable file and install it. We can install this node simply. Then I want to run MongoDB in my application just to store the information. Let me start the MongoDB. So here I have started the MongoDB. Now this MongoDB is listening to the port 27017. Now I got that also. Now MongoDB is up and running. Let me check whether it is showing the database and other stuff. Okay. Now you can see, now this MongoDB connected to this test. If I want to show the database, it will give all the databases. Okay, now MongoDB also is working fine. Now let's start the basic application. Whenever we need to build a web application with Node.js, what we have to do is, we have to create our package.json. Let me open this. First, I will be mentioning the name of this application and the version. These are all these things are mandatory. Okay. After that, inside this Node.js, I am going to use Express Framework. So Express is a framework on top of this Node application. Then body parser, it is for passing the normal string to JSON and other stuff. Mongoose, it is the connection between MongoDB and the Node.js. Lodash is just for, it's like underscore JS to do the data processing. These are all the dependencies I'm going to use inside my node application. So whenever you want to start your node app, what you have to do, you have to create just basic package or JSON and inside your app JS, you have to mention everything. My express, I have mentioned mongoose. So whenever I mention it as like require of express, it will get this express module from this node modules and we can access the express inside this particular page. That's what you can do. So here I have done the basic server configurations right here. You can see this. And whenever you are making app, app that listen to some particular port, 
then if you start your node application this application will be listened to this mentioned port number okay how to start the node application just navigate to that particular path and let's start to node whatever the file name you have given here i mark it as app.js so i will be starting node app Now this application is listening to 3000 port. Whatever the console I printed right here, so it is showing over here. Listening to 3000 port. Let me open that particular URL right here. Okay. Now it is whenever I hit this 3000, it is coming to the login that way. So what I am mentioning it in my application. Whenever any URL request comes, go to client dot slash index.html so any url comes it will go to the client folder and it will open this index.html in the same way if any ser service came for dot js or dot html or anything like this this is the regular expression to find if the service is coming it in this way whatever slash whatever dot js or html something 224 characters so whenever i request for a dot js file or dot html file it will send it with the directory name the full path i need that's why we are getting a directory name of this particular files okay so what i'm doing right here whenever we load this application automatically it will load our index.html that's the thing we configured it in our app.js uh, so in the index.html we have to create our angular app so what i'm doing first i'm injecting angular.js file right here you can see this client slash bower component i have this angular.js file inside the bower component so i'm just injecting that file i'm adding that file inside my html tag angular.min.js and I want to perform this URL routing so I am including angular UI router in this application in the same way I need some more bootstrap CSS and other functionalities so I am including this bootstrap JS also this is what I have I need for this application I defined my ng app as a user management so what we have to do we have to create the function for this ngf like angular.module of this particular application am i right so what we are doing inside our app folder i am creating this where app equal to angular.module of the whatever the name i mentioned for this angular.js and this one last time in our demo what we have seen there is no dependencies for this user management now right here i want to use the route providers that's why I am injecting UI router as a dependency injection to my application. So once I inject this application, what will we, we can access? We can access the state providers and the URL route providers. These two functions are available inside this UI router. So right here I am mentioning whenever this URL router provider is not finding any path in this mentioned folder structure just load login as a default path this is what we are mentioning right here that's why whenever whatever the path i'm typing you will change it to login you can see this so this is what we are mentioning right here if the path is not available in this provider just load this login the first one is done now whenever this path is slash login i want to load a particular template inside my application as well as i have to add the controller this is what we are mentioning right here in the state provider whenever my path is slash login load this html inside the index.html and set the login controller as my controller to this application okay so so well, let's see what is there inside this login.html. I have this HTML inside the client app pages. So client app pages have my login folder inside that I have this HTML. 
So what is happening? Whenever that particular slash login comes, it will go to this application and it will load this login.html. That's what we are doing. Okay. And it is loading this login controller as well. So let's see what do we have in the login controller. In the same way, I have created the login controller, app.controller of this one. Then whenever user clicks on this login button, I want to send username and a password to the backend. I want to verify whether this user is a valid user or not. That's what I wanted to do. So how can you contact the backend services? Here we have one service called dollar $HTTP. Dollar $HTTP HTTP of so whatever the method post method or get method or put method you can use any method and what is the URL name app slash API slash user slash login and I want to pass the user information I have that user information in the login dot user so you can see this here I have two text boxes am I here I have two text boxes this box is ng model I am assigning login.user.username and the next text box is login.user.password so whatever the data you are typing inside the text box the data will be available in this username and the password ok then whenever user clicks on the login button this is the button I have created it is the button login button I have created so whenever user clicks on this button it will call a method called login. So right here I have created a method called login.login. .login. So here I mentioned as login.login .login because this is the last name I am mentioning. So I am mentioning in the same way. Login equal. I will be calling this particular method. Once this method gets called, it will make a service call to this API. Let's see that. Here I am giving admin slash admin so this is the username and the password so whenever you want to see this web services you can open your developer tool in the networks tab you can see all the web services let me open this network whenever i click on this login you can see we are making more calls because once i log in it it is going to the next page this is what my functionality right here. I log in once the user and password is valid, just go to the slash home. This is what I mentioned. Okay, let's give the wrong user ID password so it will be in the same page. Okay, now I'm getting the error called username mismatch. So you can see the service right here. Whenever I open the service, I'm posting the data something right here user id and the password so in the response it is giving status 500 and the username is mismatch okay this is how we can handle this here i am writing like a logic in this login controller so if the status is 200 then user and user is a valid user so navigate to the slash home so what it will do in this browser So whenever I click give a proper user ID and the password, click on submit, it will give, it will add it right here as a slash home. Can you see in this URL? Then for this particular URL, I'm mentioning my route controller right here. Whenever my URL is slash home, load home.controller and load home.html for that controller this is what we are mentioning so what will happen whenever i click on this home it will go here pages home home.html pages home home.html it will load this particular html inside the index html okay but in the url you can see one more thing it is not only the home we can see home slash list okay so what is that inside the home we have one more tab these are all the tabs right here inside the home i want to make one more route this is the child route of it so here if you see inside the my home state i have one more state called the list 
I'm mentioning if the state is URL is slash list, load my list controller as well as load my list.html. So it will load this list.html and list.controller inside this comb. We have the UI view. Right here it will load everything. Because this particular list is coming under this home.html. That's why we are loading this view inside this HTML. Okay. So what is happening? Whenever it is becoming a home and it is becoming list. So it will go to this controller. Okay. So home it will load this home.html. And if it is coming under the list, it will load this list.html inside this home. Let's see what is there inside this list.html. So inside the list.html, I have created one variable called ng repeat of some kind of data. Let's see this later. First, let's look into this list.controller. Here, what I'm doing, whenever I open this particular controller, it will make a HTTP call to this web service to get the list of users available in the DB. That's what we are doing. Method is get and get, get it from this particular service. Whenever it gets the user and bind it to give it to the scope variable called user list. You can see right here, I'm not at all using dollar scope right here. Because if you use dollar scope, it will be really hard to migrate whenever we build this application in Angular 2.2. That's why we have to follow this kind of documentation. Instead of using dollar scope, use this variable. This will act as same as this dollar scope. Okay. So instead of using a this, because if I use a this, even inside the one function, this variable also will be the same. So we will get confused. That's why. I'm assigning this, this variable to LC. So we can use LC dot whatever. So this LC now will act as a scope for this particular controller. Okay. Now let's go to this listed HTML. So whenever I load this listed HTML, I'm not at all getting any data because I don't have any data in my MongoDB. So let's store some data. So what you can do, go to this create page, and we'll, we'll give some data right here. So I'm creating a user right here as a create user. So I have saved this. Now if you go to the list page, we can see that particular user. In the same way, you can create multiple users. So whenever you are coming to this list page, it will get the user list from this service and it will bind, give it to this ng repeat. Okay. Now let me create one more user so it will be clear. Have created two user. So if you see our network tabs, so we are getting these are these the file we are getting from the service. In the list service, we are getting it as a JSON object. So what we are going to do, we are going to give this particular JSON object to this ng repeat. So in the ng repeat, we will look into this object and each and every, it, it will act like a normal for loop. So this will be your array. This will be like a I, so array of I. So you can access user dot username. So you can, you are doing that only user dot first name, user dot last name. So it will act like a for loop, whatever the number you have. So what I'm doing, I'm creating a TR ng repeat inside that multiple TVs. So the user list whatever we have, it will repeat it over there and it will create a table structure look for here in the UI. I'm not at all writing any code for this. It is just ng repeat will take it out. And in this <coughs> AngularJS, we have this services and the filters. 
one of the filter is order by so normally if you want to do this kind of order by what we doing whenever you click on some particular button we will make ajax call to the back end and in the back end we will be ordered by like in the mysql or wherever it is we will do this order by and everything but here in the angular js itself you can do order by what so here i am writing the functionality whenever you click on this first name heading tag order by first name the last name is order by last name this is what we are telling right here the pipe symbol is mentioned for the filter and this order by what we are passing right here order by first name or order by let's let's do this instead of passing the variable let me put it in this way first name okay so whenever i refresh this page it will be ordered by first name because j okay this is the use of order by now we have seen this list okay how to do this create page okay what i am doing whenever i click on this create tab in the same way we are changing the url to slash create in our url route provider we have mentioned it whenever it becomes slash dot create go to create dot html and create dot controller this is what you are mentioning so let's see what is there in the create dot html so in this create and html i have created a user field called first name the last name username and other stuff so each and everything is binded to some particular ng model so you can see this right here the first name is binded to user that first name last name username and password so whenever user clicks on this particular button a sign up so it will call cc dot create this method. So this method will be available inside our create controller. So if we call this particular method, we are writing on validation whether users password and confirm as password is same. If it is not same, it will give the alert message right here. It will stop this execution. Otherwise, it will make a call to the backend service and it will post the data so we can store the data in the MongoDB. You can see that particular functionality right here. Method dot post of API slash user slash save. So we are calling this API and passing this user data. This is what we are doing inside this create list method. This is the basic application using Angular JS to explain routing and the dollar services everything. Okay. Do you have any questions on this demo? Yeah. I have a one question from Shahil called, where is this UI router defined? Okay. Let me show that to you. So this is where we are defining our AngularJS application. Am I right? So this is where we are defining our name. In this name, we can pass our dependency that is ui router over here i am just mentioning the router name right here did i answer your question Next one. So, please suggest a best AngularJS debugger plugin and how to use it. I am getting a question from Suresh. So, we can use the normal Chrome itself to debug our application. Let's do this. So, whenever I click on this particular, particular button, I want to check whether we have all the data. So, let me go to the sources. You can see all the files right here. So I have this particular HTML inside this create. So I can add the debugger right here. Just click on the particular line number. So it will add the debugger. 
okay so whenever you click on this sign up button it will come over there it stopped so you can check all the data so whether do i have the password no it is undefined this one this is also undefined so if you want to go to the next line press f10 so it will go to the next line okay this is how you can debug your application How could we describe dollar HTTP? Dollar HTTP is a service to call your web service whatever you expo expose. It is not only for the Node.js or anything. So if you use your Java or .NET, we can expose it as a web service. So if you want to call that web service, you have to use our dollar HTTP. In the dollar HTTP, we have to mention what is the method we are using and what is that URL we have to call. This is how we can use the dollar HTTP service in this AngularJS application. Okay. Yes, I'm getting one more question from Ravi called, what is dollar location? Okay, this dollar location, we used it in our uh, uh, login page. Let's go to that one. Inside our login that page, we are using dollar location. What we are telling, whatever the URL you are getting right here, if I mention as a slash home, it will go there. Dollar location of path. So this dollar location service that path, some URL, if I mention it, so it will add that URL after this hashtag. That is the use of dollar location service. Did I answer your question, Ravi? Okay, and one more question from Milaya. Is there any config file? Yeah, okay. So there is no config file for this AngularJS. Just we will be having only our defined this particular script alone. After this, you can create your app.config. That is not a config file. It is AngularJS functionality. So what we are doing, whenever you start the application, first it will come inside this config file. If you, in the, the doll app.controller and all, if you define it in the HTML, then only it will come to that particular controller. But whenever you are defining as an app.config, if you start our application, directly it will come to this config. So whatever the functionality you want to write, whenever you start the application, you can write it inside this dot config or dot run. Okay. Okay guys, almost we are at the end of the session. So let's go for, go back to our PPT. So, okay, let's, yeah. I'm getting one more question. This is a basic console.log. What is console.log? So as a UE developer, if you want to test the application, so what we will be writing? We'll be writing the console.log inside this particular functionality. So whatever the log you are writing, it will be printed inside your debugger tool. In the debugger tool, we will be having one tab called console. You can see this. So whatever the log I have written, it will come over there. Then I can verify, okay, it is coming inside this particular web page or inside this particular functionality. So I can verify it. It is like a kind of debugger, debugging technique only. No, I mean, again, one question it is, is it need any app? Nothing. So it is the default plugin available for this uh, developer tool. Just in the normal Chrome, press F12, automatically it will open the developer. If you are using Firefox or anything else, you have to include the external plugin, like Firebug or anything else. Yeah, I'm getting one question from SirenGV, where our JSON data obtaining the REST services written for it. So I have written all the REST services using our Node application. Now this webinar is only focused to AngularJS. That's why we have covered only in the client side. So if you have any uh, queries like uh, to get this recording session or anything else, you can contact to support.itureka.com. You will be getting the queries. All the queries will be resolved. Yeah, guys. So it's time we covered almost uh, all the features in the AngularJS. 
if you have any other queries regarding the session or our course just contact our support.edraica.com and please share uh, your feedback after the session once again thank you guys